first things first i'm not too sure if you guys are fans or if you're familiar with it but the joe budden podcast is now kind of back to normal it feels like with rory and more they finally come back from their uh self um self-imposed hiatus from the show um from what we know so far we don't really know the reasons behind it but from what we can kind of ascertain from the stuff that's been said on the podcast or the innuendos the likes and retweets there was some sort of um tension going on behind the scenes between rory and joe which i think a lot of fans like myself had noticed um they were kind of always kind of you know at loggerheads always kind of sniping at each other um certain times you know rory would offer basically joe to stand up and have a fight as friends to just kind of clear the air and it kind of just felt like there was a bit of a weird vibe going on around the show i said at the time it probably had a lot to do with the deals that they kind of walked away from whether it was spotify or other companies and the fact that the pandemic sort of happened soon after they kind of walked away from spotify or that deal couldn't get done and then that also then limited their ability to go out and do live shows which kind of accounted for i'd imagine a decent amount of revenue for each member of the crew and for the podcast in general so having those revenue options completely taken away from them and then not having a deal with the digital streaming platform I have I also had the feeling that maybe the co-host in uh, Rory and Moore probably were like, hmm, what's this Joe guy doing with the business? And then asked to look at certain things or maybe other people have hypothesized. It could be um, the fact that they decided to join Patreon and do bonus episodes. And Joe wasn't very clear about, you know, what how many shows needed to be done in order to make it sustainable. The guys then maybe thought they were getting overworked, bloody blah, blah, blah. Who knows? Something happened along those kind of lines in terms of, you know, the work balance and who does what output. Something happened along there in it which led to an argument between specifically rory and joe which then led to joe telling rory not to come on the show and take a break mo obviously um didn't take that too well because he was of the us four that as co-hosts and partners they should discuss who's taking the break together as a team and discuss who needs to go where but it shouldn't be left up to joe to basically hire and fire who he wants if they're meant to be a team um then our principal he decided hey if this is still going on with rory i'm not going to be standing and coming into pod somehow in that process joe for ma was going to come and talk to him and have some sort of chat clear the air they didn't by the time they did come to clear the air it was the time to record then joe took that as a slight then they started talking and then in the talking or going back and forth i'm assuming it got quite tense Parker's called into the conversation him being a consummate p- company man probably didn't add anything to it they get to a point where somehow within the back and forth between Mo and Joe Joe says to Mo oh the podcast is none of your business which then leads to you know Mo deciding no nah, F this I'm stepping out Rory already was told to leave and you know take a break so we kind of had a six week period is it six weeks i don't know how long it was but we had a basically a month period where um the joe Biden podcast wasn't hosted by the original co-host and was instead co was instead um subbed in joe subbed in um or ice and issue uh two of his other close friends which you know they did a pretty decent job in terms of holding things down by the looks of things i've read on reddit and obviously this has been the long return the long um, heralded return of the two boys and wow man wow joe budden is a very interesting character it has to be said um you listen to the conversation that they had obviously it's the first pod back after the tension um according to joe they had all come to everybody in the team they had a, a six hour conversation prior to the show so this if this is what happens if this is what if this is how tense it is after you know spending a prolonged period of time before you record and then you get in front of the camera i i i would go as far as saying that maybe the show is done because the tension, the tense, the um, th- you could cut the tension in there with a knife. You honestly could. It was insane. Um, Joe was basically, you know, didn't want to acknowledge or accept that he, you know, he caused any um, of the issues that led to his co-hosts leaving and taking a break from the show. 
Joe also couldn't understand why Moore would be upset about him replacing them temporarily on the show and not talking about it with them sooner or not even discussing or trying to work it out so that they can get back on the show quick enough. That was a bit strange. And just generally, just the semantics and the games and the word plays and the, you know, and the changing of the narratives and of the topic and picking at certain things and lack of accountability. Joe's a weird dude, man. Honestly, one of the strange people I've seen on podcasts in a long long time it's probably obviously people would say narcissism but there's something odd just about him in general that doesn't really make any sense like especially when you consider how you know how um combative his actual rap career was right he's always arguing with labels and having trouble with getting stuff released and feeling as if like he wasn't the priority and loads of really you know backhanded sort of like you know standard music industry stuff but stuff that you know would be felt very viscerally to somebody as um principled in his art as somebody that was joe right you'd imagine he'd have a lot of battle scars that he's kind of had to carry around with him during his time of being a rapper so you'd imagine maybe some of those experiences would lead him to be like you know what whatever business i get into in the future i'm gonna make sure i treat people a certain way because i don't like how this person did x y and z to me but god damn it man there's a part in the pod where he mentioned something about him and jay-z having this tension from years back let's say more than 15 years and um it never really got resolved and then they finally ended up at some sort of brunch or dinner where jay-z happened to be there and joe tried to broach the subject and speak about it you know maybe with the hopes of getting an apology or something on lodgement that that was fucked up what jay did to joe back in the day and jay in response said so what or something worse to that effect which you know was like a funny running joke on the pod and then joe says in this debate or in this kind of um welcome back uh airing out conversation they have he says to more that the fact that more was upset that he decided to replace them both with ice and ish temporarily was a so what moment that was his chance to say so what because he's been slighted by jay 16 years ago and he couldn't comprehend how that's not an example that makes any sense especially when you can think that jay-z and jo and joe didn't have any prior relationship they're not friends they didn't grow up together so you know joe jay probably doesn't owe joe an explanation for why he treated him like shit when they were first coming up but you'd imagine joe does owe his friends an explanation don't you think so and then that part of the story was even weirder that part of the pod where joe was like i don't think i owe my friends an explanation but he would owe a stranger but he he deserves what he what do you say he doesn't owe his friends an explanation but he gives strangers respect off the bat like pff, i don't know man sometimes you wonder like is it joe's fault or is it more so his friends who have enabled this type of behavior because a part of me thinks why is this also tolerated especially in a group of friends a group of male friends because that's usually one of the unfortunate one of the kind of um difficult things about maintaining male friendships especially when they're tense and there's a lot of kind of you know passive aggressive things going on there's only so much one dude can take of that kind of you know passive aggressive innuendo sarcastic sarcastic sort of like digs and jokes until the person just says hey enough's enough do you want to square up and fight that's what usually happens so men don't have the luxury of playing you know uh bitchy backstabby sort of like subliminal games we don't have that luxury because another man won't let you go that far they're gonna call you they're gonna pull you they're gonna pull your card right for lack of a better term but it feels like nothing that's never really happened to joe that might explain why he's so like i don't know i wouldn't say dismissive why he's just so insane like nothing made sense and again it was an incredibly tense podcast it felt like more went out of his way to like not speak as much as he would have in the past it, I think he, even in the beginning of the show, he doesn't speak for a good 15 minutes, it feels like, before you actually hear Maul's voice on the podcast. So I can only imagine what the video must have looked like. Um, then, of course, you've got Parks, who kind of reminding us all that he's a consumer per, per, you know, company man, saying that the pod has to go on and you guys took too long. Like, he's just, you know, it was quite annoying to hear him. And it's just funny as well also to see how you know, places like Reddit and stuff have kind of completely turned on Parks when they've kind of realized that he's essentially gonna always be you know on joe's side on most things which makes sense considering he's joe's engineer and probably knows joe longer than he's known the other guys i'd assume so that friendship is probably a little deeper but that was interesting to, to hear and i don't know man I, what do you guys think if you i want to clip this up and put this on my channel but let me know what you guys think um 
is there a future for the Joe Biden podcast? Do you actually see it lasting a long time? Um, I guess they could get over this hump and just kind of get back to normal. But to be away from a podcast that you do with your friends for a month and then to come back and the, you know, the main host who kind of acts like it's his, which it basically is by how Joe's going on, then fails to acknowledge any of the pain he might have caused. I don't see how you can go back to just normality. It just feels odd unless, you know, they generally do are okay and they just need a bit of time to kind of get back to their original rhythm which is fine too but i don't know man i just don't i'd find it difficult to pod with somebody who really didn't value my um contribution to the show or didn't think the show was none of my business like that line floored me that floored me when 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 ma said it took it to joe and he tells you it's none of your business it's like wow now we know anyway now all the theories that alf the fans had on the reddits has been um vindicated because we always said a lot of the people on there myself included said um it always felt as if like joe made a bit of a power play subconsciously sort of asserting his dominance by you know changing the name of the podcast from i was named this podcast later to the joe budden you know the joe budden podcast or joe, yeah and ever since then it's always felt as if like it's his thing and you know the guys are just his employees which i'm sure isn't wasn't what they set out to do in the beginning but then Joe again today for a little innuendo, he said, oh, what does that contract say? You know, in response to more saying that he's owed an apology. So maybe the contract does state that Joe's the boss and he has to make these executive choices. But I just don't see where the fun is in setting up a business with friends if you can't give them some leeway. If you can't maybe do things a little bit unconventional for what a big corporation could do. Because you heard Joe say that quite often. What other job could you do where you could leave for four weeks and then come back and your seat's always open? Yeah, but that's the point. That's the beauty of having, you know, a podcast with your friends. Same goes for, you know, if you had your own bar and you, you let your friend run run a tab, you probably let him go a little bit more of a limit than actual regular punters because that's your friend and you can get away with us doing that sort of thing. Obviously to a, you know, not you don't want anyone to take the piss but i don't know man i just i'm really struggling to find out how joe Biden has friends i'm perplexed i don't know but anyway let me know in the comments down below what do you think will the show get back to its regular scheduled programming or is that basically it and his detention and the respect just been diminished to a point where it's never going to return to how it once was let me know in the comments down below